Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I can't wait for One Punch Man Season 2. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. For a very long time now, many of you have been requesting an episode on the Amalgam Universe, including how it was created and its different characters. Well, I see you. I hear you, and I've got your back. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Amalgam Universe, it combines DC characters and Marvel characters to create one completely new character. A good example of this would be Darkclaw, who's an amalgamation of Wolverine and Batman. It's a very interesting idea, and one of the things comic fans still love to talk about from the 90s era of comics. I know my 10-year-old self thought it was absolutely amazing to see Doctor Strange, Professor X, and Doctor Fate mashed into one character or Superman combined with Captain America. Heck, my 30-year-old self still geeks out, which is why I'm pretty jacked up to finally be talking about this. Anyway, it all started with the four-part DC vs. Marvel crossover event simply called DC vs. Marvel or Marvel vs. DC. It uses both names because the first and fourth issues are called DC vs. Marvel, and the second and third issues are called Marvel vs. DC. Essentially, it was a compromise between both publishers, so each could have their brand name first in the title. Anyway, the Amalgam Universe started in that DC Marvel crossover event. We see in the first issue Marvel characters being transported to the DC Universe, like Spider-Man ending up in Gotham and Juggernaut ending up in Metropolis. This happens with several other characters throughout the issue, but towards the end of the issue we see Spectre kind of freaked out saying, what transpires here? The universe itself ripples with disturbance. I sense workings of forces I have never before encountered, powers which make me inconsequential by comparison. Events are being set in motion that not even the Spectre can stop. Reading Spectre say that is insane considering he's one of the top five most powerful beings in the DC Universe. But it gets better than that, my comic Conrads. We then see the Living Tribunal say, the cosmic balance tilts, and for the first time I cannot write it. But what could exist that is mighty enough to thwart the will of the Living Tribunal? Again, this is insane because the Living Tribunal is easily top three most powerful beings in the entire Marvel Universe. So in the first issue, we see both Spectre and the Living Tribunal say that whatever's happening is way beyond their power which is nuts. Well, it turned out that both the physical incarnations of the DC and Marvel Universe, who are referred to as brothers, have woken from their eons of slumber and have become aware of each other. Yeah, you heard me right. The entirety of the Marvel and DC Universe have physical incarnations, which all I could say is comic books, everybody. But the brothers clearly don't like each other, so to stop them from destroying each other, they decide to have characters from each universe fight each other. They're champions of sorts, to see which universe is worthy of surviving. Now here in the real world, the readers would vote on each match to decide who would win, which is the only reason Storm beat Wonder Woman, because let's be honest, that's not a thing. Cue comment war. But as the fights go on, like Thor vs Shazam, Silver Surfer vs Green Lantern, and Superman vs Hulk, we are introduced to Access, a character created just for this event. He's basically the gatekeeper who became stuck while traveling between both the DC and Marvel universes. When all the fighting is said and done, neither the Marvel or DC universe was willing to let go. So to prevent total destruction, the Spectre and the Living Tribunal joined forces and created the Amalgam Universe, which merged the DC and Marvel universe into one forming completely new characters. Access ultimately did manage to separate the brothers, aka the Marvel and DC universes, with the help of the Amalgam Heroes. How did he do this, you ask? Well, before the merger had taken place, he implanted shards of the universe into both Batman and Captain America. Then once he found Darkclaw, which again is a Batman-Wolverine hybrid, and Super Soldier, which is a Superman-Captain America hybrid, Access used the shards he placed in them to give the Spectre and the Tribunal the power to restore both universes. The brothers then realized that their conflict was pointless, saying to each other while shaking hands, you've done well. The final issue serves as a metaphor implying that there is room for both the DC and Marvel Universe in the world and that neither publisher is better than the other. See, publishers can play nice with one another. Later, however, it was revealed that the Amalgam Universe would be allowed to continue in its own pocket reality, which was given to access for safekeeping. This gave us all the Amalgam comic books that detailed the origins and adventures of the Amalgam characters. But the origin of the Amalgam Universe itself took place in the DC vs. Marvel crossover event. Now, even though the main focus for this episode was to tell you guys what the Amalgam Universe is, and more importantly, how it came to be, I'm still going to briefly list and talk about several of the characters it created. I've already mentioned the most popular character, which is Darkclaw. The real name of this combination of Batman and Wolverine is Logan Wayne. After his parents were killed and he discovered his mutant abilities, he became Darkclaw, the world's greatest detective. He's also way more violent than Batman as he has Wolverine mixed in there. Then there's Super Soldier, a mixture of Superman and Captain America, whose real name is Clark Kent, so no change there. During World War II, the government used samples of cells from an alien ship that crash landed in 1938. Then they injected one of the samples into a young man named Clark Kent in order to create a Super Soldier. Next is the most powerful being in the Amalgam Universe. 
universe, Doctor Strange Fate. He's a mixture of Professor X, Doctor Strange, and Doctor Fate, and the sole reason the Amalgam Universe was put into a pocket dimension. Then there's Spider-Boy, who's a combination of Ben Reilly's Spider-Man and Superboy. He was created when Project Cadmus attempted to clone Super Soldier. They used the DNA from one of the researchers named Peter Parker, but the project was sabotaged and only his clone survived, thus giving us Spider-Boy. After that we have Amazon, a mixture of Wonder Woman and Storm. Green Skull, an amalgam of Red Skull and Lex Luthor, and Doctor Doomsday, which is Doomsday and Doctor Doom. Kind of a weird combo, but whatever. Next is the obvious combo of Darkseid and Thanos, giving us Thanos side. Then there's Thorion, a combination of Thor and DC's Orion, Hyena, which is a Joker Sabretooth mashup, and Mariner, which is a combo of Aquaman and Namor. Some other characters would be Captain Marvel, who's an amalgamation of Shazam and Marvel's Captain Marvel, Iron Lantern, which of course is Iron Man and Green Lantern, Mr. X, which is Martian Manhunter and Professor X all wrapped up into one, the Jubilee and Robin mashup named Sparrow, and Deadeye, who is a mix of Deadshot and Bullseye. Finally, the last amalgam character I'll mention is one of my personal favorites, and that would be Speed Demon. He's the amalgamation of Ghost Rider, The Flash, and Etragon. I mean, just look at him. He looks awesome. Very 90s, but awesome nonetheless. Clearly there are a few more characters in the Amalgam universe, but I think you guys get the point. We are planning to start doing a series of episodes on individual Amalgam characters. We don't have the exact time frame yet, but keep an eye out for those in the future. But that's going to do it for today's episode. Be sure to head over to VariantComics.com to let us know what Amalgam characters you would like us to cover in future episodes. And we'll see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics.